What are your thoughts as a vegan seeing all these fast food chains, restaurants and hotels accommodating to the vegan lifestyles? I'm quite excited actually because the more products and innovations available, the more lives saved. And the great thing is that these products are so innovative and advanced that they appeal to both vegans and non-vegans. So the funny thing is that there's actually sometimes this resistance, you know, from non-vegans who say, why are you simulating the same taste and texture of these products? Shouldn't you be eating salad? But the cool thing is that most vegans actually enjoy a burger, a pizza, fried rice, just like anyone else. They just like it minus the cruelty. And then some of these restaurants can't even keep up the demands of the vegan food that they offer. And I love that, to be honest. When I walk into a supermarket like City Super and I'm looking for Beyond Sausages and they're sold out, for me it's like almost a little victory because the demand is so great. Okay, so let me ask you this. What inspired you to be a vegan? For me, it was simple. It's just a, a stance against injustice. I, w I remember when I was 12, 13 years old, watching movies like Charlotte's Web and Babe and rooting for the animal to escape harm's way. And then I'd sit down at the dinner table and eat these same animals. And so eventually I made that connection and I realized this wasn't something that sat well with me. And so I aligned my actions with my values and I was vegetarian for 20 years. And then uh, the story from vegetarian to vegan is kind of a, a humbling one, to be honest, because I was asked to speak out and endorse initiatives like Veganuary and Veg Week, and I was urging people to be vegan, but I myself wasn't, you know? People, and people are very savvy. They pick up on things when you're not very consistent and sincere. So they asked me, like, if it's so great, why aren't you doing it yourself? And so I investigated the dairy industry, egg industry, wool and leather industries, and I knew that that just wasn't something that sat well with me. Okay, so that takes me to my next question is, you know, tell me about the process of the transition of you becoming, uh, you know, into a vegan. And were you able to adapt to this lifestyle easily? I did it pretty much right away because when you think of the victims instead of just yourself, the choice becomes a very easy one. Animals are not hugged and kissed into nuggets and fillets. It's an inherently gruesome and violent process, and they fight for their lives until the very last moment. And I think instinctively you, you and I and, and people know that, which is why we would gladly go to an apple orchard or a strawberry field, but we would shudder at the thought of walking into a slaughterhouse. And these industries, these, these multi-billion dollar industries, thrive on that misinformation and concealing the truth from us. And that's why I feel compelled to speak out as much as I can. You move from the States to Hong Kong. Is Asia easier or harder to go vegan than other parts of the world? You know, five to seven years ago, I would have said much more difficult. Now, I'd say it's just as easy to be vegan here in Asia as it is the US, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants here in, in Hong Kong is Loving Hut, and the food is delicious, it's very varied, and you can get a full meal for 50 to 60 Hong Kong dollars. So it dispels this whole myth that veganism is somehow unaffordable and, and overly expensive. Okay, so, you know, for us who wants to dip our toes into the vegan world, what is your advice to, for someone who wants to become a vegan? I'd say hold yourself accountable and stick with the things that you say you truly care about. Most of us say that we love animals, that we value peace, compassion and nonviolence, and yet we engage in practices that are in complete opposition of it. Most of us say that we are concerned about climate change and global warming, and yet animal agriculture is the leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, and we focus so and much on... such big topics that everyone concer right. is concerned yeah, about. Yeah, and there's a disproportionate focus on single use and plastic straws, and it only accounts for 8% of the plastic in the ocean. Over 50% right. is discarded fishing nets and other fishing gear. So if we truly care about the cause, we need to focus on the big culprits and tackle them. Let me ask this going forward. Where do you see the vegan movement going forward? Onward and upwards, to be honest. In the last four years, there's been exponential growth. People are really becoming more conscious about this, and I see that it's going to be growing even more than it has in the last few years. Okay, well, Richie Cole, stay green and stay lean. Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you.